And now I'd like to give the floor to the third speaker, Mr. Felix Ackerman. I can give them the floor only in a virtual manner. Felix, are you with us? We can address him in Lithuanian. He is an anthropology historian. He has lived and worked in Lithuania in the, and he taught in the uh, uh, University of Humanities of Europe. Can you hear me? It's a great pleasure. Uh, Felix will give the presentation about the building. I've known him, by the way, for 10, 12 years, and he has been always speaking about the subject. I mean, Lukishke's prison, and his presentation is titled, titled Lukishke's prison and the making of Polish Vilnius. Felix, whenever you are ready. The presentation will be given in English. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Can you see my presentation? Excellent. For, for inviting me and I just want to start with a brief disclaimer. Uh, the title of my presentation was, to, to, was supposed to be Lubschke's prison and the unmaking of Vilno in English, and the organizers changed it uh, into Lukashenko's prison and the unmaking of Polish Vilnius. And I think that uh, this tiny shift is already uh, saying something about heritage, and I prepared a small revenge. Uh, so I will I will quote Gediminas uh, all throughout my paper and name your city Vilna, okay? Um, uh, the idea of my talk today is twofold. I wish in the first part to point to the importance of uh, to include uh, former religious spaces into the discussion of heritage protection for future Lukishkis prison concepts. And in the second part, I wish to give an example why any simple definition of dark heritage in the case of the central prison space of Vilna is impossible. I explained during uh, earlier discussions that Lukishkis prison was a crucial tool for the modern rule in Vilna. To put this very simple, it was used by changing state formations in order to persecute the inhabitants of Vilna. The Russian Empire, the German Reich, Polish Republic, the Soviet Union, and last but not least, the independent uh, uh, Lithuanian Republic. You can read this history as a palimpsest uh, with various layers of state repressions, which took place at Lukishkis. But it is you who decide which layers you will bring to the forefront and which layers you will leave out of account. The notion of palimpsest, in my mind, is helpful because it defines heritage not as a physical result, but rather as the process of writing, erasing, and rewriting. The image of a, a palimpsest as the surface of a re recycled papyrus bears another ambiguity. You can read it literally, and you can think about it as a metaphor. In my title, Lukishkis and the Unmaking of Vilno, I point to the first meaning of palimpsest as a process of physical erasure of an important layer in the urban history. I propose today a very simple definition of what I mean with the unmaking of Vilno. It's the sum of practices directed at the isolation, deportation, or physical destruction of Polish-speaking inhabitants of Vilna. Thus, I don't use an essentialist notion of the city belonging either to one nation or another, and I consciously do not make a linear connection between using Polish in everyday communication, expressing Polish identities, and the city being part of the Polish state. The modern prison in, uh, established at the suburb of Lukishkis in 1904 was an infrastructure of the Russian state. It was a central space for the implementation of penal law and the Lithuanian periphery of the Russian Empire. Both architecture and technological features of Lukishkis were representations of the imperial Russian state. The, um, let me uh, try to switch the image off here. Uh, the St. Nicola Church at the entrance, uh, throughout the last decades rather used as Dom Kulture than a religious space, 
uh, you would find a Roman Catholic chapel, uh, which was included directly into the rotunda at the center of three cell corridors in the next building. Uh, it allowed the priest to gather the inmates for Sunday services without leaving the corridor and a Jewish prayer space under the roof of the, of the rear cell building uh, on the right side of, of the picture, just on the screen. I have been collaborating with Turku Bankers project team uh, on the future vision, and I have been repeating for five years now that this hierarchical threefold configuration of religious spaces is an important core feature of Lukashka's prison. In the highly professional feasibility study produced by Turgu Bankers, I hardly find any notion of these religious spaces, although they appear in almost every photo session about Lukishkis, including the coverage of the most recent theater project by Agnes Scheiteiter. In my mind, there are two reasons why these three religious spaces are not explicitly included in the heritage protection scheme by now. First, we do not know much about the everyday practice, the interior and the actors included. Secondly, if these spaces would be treated as former and potential future religious spaces, it would be necessary to include the Russian Orthodox Church as a stakeholder into the process, as well as the Roman Catholic Church and the Jewish community of Vilna. As to my knowledge, there are not so, no such plans. But it is not up to me to judge. I just want to explain that this is the result of a conscious political decision taken by various interest groups involved. Just to give you an example of what I mean. Um, acknowledging the religious character of the second floor balcony uh, at the central circular hall might limit future modes of using the space. Um, and here you see a, a picture I, I took uh, recently after a workshop with Turgos Bankers of the Jewish uh, prayer space, which has been used uh, throughout the last years as a Catholic chapel. So, uh, so the the Jewish prayer room um, is with the Jewish prayer room is even more complicated as. Uh, as you would have to acknowledge if you make it visible as a Jewish space uh, or as a intentionally intended as Jewish space uh, uh, in, in Russian times, it would make visible that uh, in free democratic Western oriented Republic of Lithuania, a former Jewish space uh, was uh, turned into a Roman Catholic uh, chapel without even paying attention to this fact. So I think it's not, this was not done on purpose, of course, but uh, it still uh, relates to the question of uh, heritage and the palimpsest where already a, a whole layer of, uh, of memory is missing. And in the end, it is up to you to decide how to treat this twofold history of the space on the fourth floor in the second and the third building. And uh, in my understanding of the palimpsest, uh, not mentioning this history is uh, and not including it into future scenarios is a form of active erasure of cultural text. I come to the second part, the unmaking of Vilno. The Second Polish Republic turned after 1935 towards radical authoritarian forms of governance, including the harsh treatment of political prisoners. Thus, Lukaszczuk, even before the beginning of World War II, was a state infrastructure for the unmaking of the complex urban web of Vilno by the Polish state itself. This included a broad range of communist and socialist activists, but also nationalists, including Zionists, Belarusian and Ukrainian political entrepreneurs who were held in custody at Lukishkis before they were taken to other facilities throughout uh, interwar Poland. Uh, most of them were part of the Polish-speaking configuration of Vilna. Gdańsk-based uh, historian Monika Tomkiewicz created a very dense chronicle in her book, Inżynia na Łukiszkach Wilnie. From her, I have learned that the first victims of Soviet repressions were representatives of the Polish state, such as soldiers, members of political parties, 
um, and other public figures. Special NKVD units used Lukischkis as a transit prison before deportations to the East or execution. The first known case was the transfer of a large group of Poles from a school building at Pocholanka, today better known as Basanarchoskatwe, to Lukischkis on September 19 in, um, in 1939. Uh, special lists contain the names of 351 Polish members to the local intelligentsia. Among them, uh, the, the mayor um, of Vilno, Dr. Uh, Viktor Mal Malaszewski, the vice mayor, vice Voivoda, head of the municipal hospital, and even the head of the firefighting uh, unit, Eugeniusz Rusek, as well as several professors of Stefan Batora University. During the short period when Vilna was under Lithuanian rule in late 1939 and early 1940, Lukishkis was used by Sauguma in order to imprison Polish activists who were actively opposing Lithuanian authorities. In March 1940, uh, 121 members of the Commissariat uh, Stondu were held in custody at Lukishkis. Another 142 members of illegal Polish organizations such as Związek Wolnach Polakov, were taken in spring 1940. After the Soviet takeover of, uh, in July 1940, uh, the, the next uh, members of Polish elite of Vilna were taken to Lukishkis. Among them, the former prime minister, Alexander Pristor, and several staff members of the university, uh, better known back then at Stefan Batol University. Uh, among them, professor, uh, the professor of physics, Alexander Jabłoński. Another uh, 91 persons were imprisoned during the night uh, of July 12 and 13. For hundreds of members of the Polish army, Lukishkis turned out to be the last uh, transit camp on their way to Kozielsk and other camps better known as Katyn complex. The last wave of Soviet repressions before the German attack uh, took place in June 1941. When Luftwaffe already attacked Vilna, NKVD started to prepare for evacuation. On June 23, prisoners from Lukishki Square were taken uh, by train to Gorky. From Lukishki's prison, uh, so 225 from, from the NKVD prison, number three back then uh, at Lukishki Square, and more than 2,000, uh, more than 100, sorry, more than 1,200 persons were taken directly from prison number two, what uh, today we call it Lukishkis prison, uh, at the cellars uh, uh, of the prisons, uh, the, uh, the bodies of more than 900 murdered prisoners were found. The Soviet mass deportations of inhabitants of Vilna were an important part of the unmaking of Vilno. As most of the deportees spoke Polish, regardless their religious and ethnic identities, their occupation or age. It is clear that Polish was only among many languages spoken in the deportation trains. Uh, but if there was a lingua franca shared by the very uh, different younger deportees, it was rather Polish, while older deportees may have shared Russian. During the beginning of German rule in Vilna, the variety of prisoners at Lubischkis was very large. So on July uh, 24 uh, in 1941, the German statistics are very clear. Among roughly 1,000 inmates, 175 uh, were Soviet prisoners of war, 173 political Jewish prisoners, 48 Jewish female political prisoners, 112 Lithuanian political prisoners, one Lithuanian female political prisoner, 309 Polish political prisoners, six female political prisoners of Polish background, 42 Russian political prisoners and two female Russian prisoners and so on. There were also uh, criminal inmates, but their number was less, less uh, much lower. So I, I quoted this broad picture just to make sure that 
the, uh, the, the German repressions were not uh, only directed at uh, against uh, Polish inmates of Vilna, but to a broad range of inhabitants and POWs. From the very beginning of German persecution of Jews in Vilna, uh, Lukaszkis played a central role as a space of transition from the ghettos to Ponar. This was the case on uh, 1st of October 1941, when about 1,700 Jews were brought to the extermination site outside Vilna from Lukashka's prison. Another 2,200 followed the next day. With the radicalization of racist uh, policies directed against Jewish inhabitants of Vilna, uh, the German occupation regime started to treat the Slavic population in the occupied territories in a much more brutalized way. So uh, I, I do not want to put everything together. I think that there is a difference between the, the scope and the scale of the genocide of the European Jewry, which actually took place in, in places like Vilna, and the mass uh, scale of violence directed against non-Jewish inhabitants of Central Eastern Europe and uh, its Northern part. But in spring 1942, both took place at Lukashki's prison at the same time. And I think that's something we have to bring together. Um, and and Lukashki as a space maybe helps us even to, to think about it as parallel processes, which are somehow interconnected. After um, several months with around 1,000 inmates, the number of prisoners doubled in March 1942, when mass arrests of Poles took place. During June and July, 1942, every week dozens of Polish inmates of Lukashkis were taken to execution in Ponar. But what I actually want to link is the uh, architecture of Lukashkis prison and the chapel I refer to and you see uh, on, the, on the presentation screen and the story of the liquidation of the the theological seminar, uh, which I find is not very known in, in Vilna today. On the 3rd of March, 1942, German authorities decided to formally liquidate the Roman Catholic Theological Seminary in Vilna. Lukashka's prison was used as a means to withdraw all members of the seminary, of the seminar from the monastery at St. Jerzy uh, Church, uh, so the former uh, Carmelite uh, monastery. Among them, prisoners uh, was the head of the seminar, Jan Oshuo, the, uh, the Dean of the Department of Theology at Stefan Batore University, held at Lukischkis, uh, were also Antoni Chironski, Jan Ellert, and Czesław Falkowski. So this link is, uh, so it links the, the Lukischkis prison on the one hand with the building, uh, which is now empty after it was the book uh, storage, uh, but it also links, uh, the story is also linked to uh, the history of Stefan Bator University and its liquidation. While Lithuanian priests were uh, released after already three days, most of the Polish priests were deported on May uh, 2nd, uh, many of them to Germany uh, for forced labor. Some of them were able to, to flee the, the deportation train. So, for instance, Franciszek Organowski was murdered in. Uh, Felix Kochanowski managed to leave the train in Grodno, Gardeners, and was shot in Svislodz nearby. On March uh, 22, 1942, the Roman Catholic Archbishop Romald uh, Jałbrzykowski and the Chancellor uh, of the Theological Seminar, Adam Savitsky, were taken into custody in Mariampole. In my definition, I classify this unseen level of violence against Christian priests as part of the unmaking of Vilno. It was followed by the mass arrests of nuns and monks from the remaining Catholic convents and monasteries in Vilna on March 26 and 27. So a minimum, imagine, a minimum of 189 women and 64 men were imprisoned at Lukishkis making the prison the largest temporary monastery in the history of Vilna and maybe of Lithuania at large. Uh, I, I will just, uh, because I had to 
problems with translating them and uh, sorry for the translators <laughs> in general. Uh, the Polish names of these monasteries are Benedictinki, Bernadinki, Wizytki, Misjonarki, Uszolanki, Siostry Matki Bożej uh, Miłosierdzia, also known as Magdalenki, Nazaretanki, Siostry Rodziny Marii, Serafitki, Salesianki, and they were also later followed by nuns from the Dominican convent. Many of them were released after several weeks. Others, uh, such as Julia Rodzinska, taken to Stutthof concentration camp, where she died in February 1945. After Romat uh, Jelbzikowski's, uh, so the archbishop, uh, transferred to Mariampole, um, he stopped to be the archbishop and the assistant bishop um, and former Lithuanian minister of foreign affairs. Mechoslovas Reynis, which is much better known to you, became Archbishop of Vilna uh, and a, fun a function he actually fulfilled until his capture by Soviet special forces in 1947. In autumn 1942, he tried to set up a new theological academy in Vilna, mainly with Lithuanian priests. This attempt was forcefully stopped by German authorities already in March 1943. As you know, Mieczysław Reynis was further persecuted after his capture in 1947 and died in a Soviet prison at Vladimir in 1953. It is very well known uh, also in Poland, I just called before, before the talk to Białystok uh, Theological Seminar to Ksiądz Krachel, like it is very well known in Poland that uh, a Soviet attempt to, to, to turn Renis against uh, Polish clergy after the war was uh, unsuccessful because he said that he is, a, he is in charge of all, all Catholic uh, priests and uh, nuns. So, so, so um, uh, he, he, after the war, became a, a victim of, of the second phase of Sovietization. And uh, as you know, uh, there is a beatification process pre prepared underway. Uh, the dissolution of the theological seminary and the almost all monasteries in Vilna in spring 1942 took place under German occupational rule with the help of special police units which uh, who did not represent the Lithuanian state but uh, were made up by young Lithuanian speaking men who were often not from Vilna. The Lukashka's prison itself was run mainly by Lithuanian civic personnel under German supervision. Therefore, it was not by chance that the Roman Catholic prison chapel in 1942 was uh, Iwasas The Lithuanian priest had officially been working for the uh, prison administration since early 1942, holding regular services for Catholics, um, providing them with an opportunity to have confession and even baptizing moribund inmates, among them Jews and Roma, which he uh, underlined in his, uh, in his uh, diary. In his uh, diary, he also wrote about daily events like the regular Entlassungge. Uh, so this is the German term uh, that belittled the murder in Pona when, when prisoners were taken for execution outside the city. He also took note of the sheer amount of direct and indirect signs of open hostility between uh, Lithuanians and Poles within the prison. So the tension between Lithuanian guards and the more numerous Polish inmates complicated the administration's life considerably and vice versa. According to Baltamonaitis, on several occasions, a German officer in charge stated openly that his life would be easier if the guards were Polish. As a consequence, there were uh, repeated requests made by the head of the Lithuanian prison administration to treat prisoners less brutal, uh, a clear sign that uh, the everyday level of violence was significant. The, prison them, the prisoners themselves were in constant conflict uh, and among the uh, Polish, uh, Poles and Lithuanians nationalities seemed to be perhaps a core issue. As a result, uh, signs of horizontal uh, solidarity beyond one's own uh, social or national group were rather rare. 
I will come uh, to an end, uh, uh, to, to the end of German occupation and sum up that uh, roughly, uh, according to Tomkiewicz, uh, there were roughly 2,000 Polish victims of German rule in Ponar. So uh, a comparatively low number, of course, if you compare to the Jewish, uh, to the number of uh, Holocaust um, uh, victims, uh, which is uh, far, far higher than 50,000. So, so it makes little sense to, to put this together uh, and to compare here. After the Soviet re reconquer of Vilna, again, uh, thousands of inhabitants of Vilna, both Poles and Lithuanians, were deported in Soviet trains from Vilna to Siberia during the first months of 1945. Lukishkis, again, served as a transit camp now used by NKVD and other services. For the beginning of the large-scale repatriation um, of Poles to, um, to uh, communist Poland, the violence at Lukashkis prison and at Lukashkis square had an important influence on the decisions, which were actually life decisions, uh, made by the remaining Polish-speaking inhabitants of Vilna to apply for resettlement. As a result, many remaining inhabitants of Vilna left their hometown for post-war Poland under communist rule. So uh, I come back now in the very end of my presentation to the question of heritage. So we have, uh, as you see on the, on the presentation, we have the physical remains of the Roman Catholic chapel at Lubiskis. And I just draw a, a very dense sketch of how it was used to unmake the historical landscape of Polish speaking Roman Catholic institutions, including the theological seminar, uh, the theological department of Stefan Batory University, but also the majority of historical convents and monasteries in Vilna. Thus, just a few years before the second phase of Sovietization, put a brutal end to the organized religious life of these institutions in Vilnius. There was a successful attempt to use Lukishkis to unmake Vilno under German rule. In the end, it is up to you to decide whether you will tell the story at the historical compound and Lukishkis, uh, <coughs> of Lukishkis once it turns into a fancy hub of business, culture, art and NGOs. If you hand over one prison wing to the creators of the exhibition in uh, Aukugatwe at Lukishke Square, this story will most probably be erased from the Lukishke Palimpsest, as where most of the Polish victims uh, of post-war repressions against the inhabitants of Vilna from the official narrative about uh, Soviet repressions in Lithuania today. Thus, for me, uh, commuting between uh, Zvirinas and, and Vilnius University on an everyday basis, the facade uh, of the court building at Lukishke Square is a perfect illustration of what I have in mind calling Lukishke a palimpsest. So the decision to choose only Lithuanian names of post-war victims uh, of Soviet repressions is an active form of erasure and hence forgetting. That's uh, because uh, I, I left this part out because you, you know that among uh, the victims who were executed at this place, there were more than 200 Lithuanian uh, members of the underground movement, but also more than 30 Polish uh, members of the uh, Homeland Army, which were executed and taken to Tuskolene. So uh, the unmaking of Vilno in the end was a twofold process is a twofold process. It was the sum of state practices uh, on behalf of the German and Soviet uh, or, or occupants directed at the destruction or deportation of Polish speaking inhabitants between 1939 and roughly speaking 1949. And it is the active decision not to include their story into the narrative about Vilna in the 20th century. Working on a future exhibition for Lukashkis, you will, to have, you will have to decide uh, if you address this issue. In the Turtu Banka's feasibility study, the large amount of former Armia Krajowa uh, fighters who were killed in the 1940s by Soviet bullets is uh, actually prominently mentioned. 
if I may end with a proposal, and um, that's why I uh, called to Bjorgstok before my presentation, uh, you may consider the theological seminar in Bjorgstok uh, to be a stakeholder in the process. As the prisons uh, driven out of, of Vilna via Lukashkis in, in, Mar in February and March 1942, uh, were transferred to nearby Bjorgstok, where they created a new theological uh, institution. In the same way, I think that you shall consider to discuss the specifically Jewish heritage of the prayer room upstairs in the rear building with the members of the Jewish community of Vilnius. And last but not least, I would uh, uh, also propose to include the participation of uh, Lithuanian prison guards and chaplains in the unmaking of Vilno into a longer history of imprisonment in Lithuania. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Felix said that the decision is with us, but if we consult Felix, what would Felix's vision and concept be? Do the memories mentioned by you be, should uh, uh, the ideas mentioned by you be the main message? And if not, how should these memories be combined with other uh, purposes or, for example, the ideas of businesses uh, they would like to do or the criminal layer of this um, uh, prison? Thank you for the question. I will try to answer the question in Lithuanian. If I'm not successful, I will move into English. As far as I understand from Turtobankas, they see it as a multifunctional area and something new should be happening there and they are discussing about the future of Vilnius city center and they related to, rather with the future than with the past and as you say we shouldn't focus on the numbers on inmates there or how how many of them were exiled for example I'm not arguing for 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 making the prison a museum, and also I think that um, that the the concept which has already been discussed to make it very multifunctional is is wonderful. And I was more uh, preparing this speech. I was more um, thinking about the visibility of the links. You know, we all know about the link between. Kukishke Square with the KGB uh, prison and uh, the, the cross from 1863 and Lukishke's prison. But I think you, if you think this way, you could uh, you could come up with much more ways of connecting uh, Lukishke to Ponar to to the um, uh, Carmelite monastery and. Um, and I think there are already very nice ideas how to make it, not to make it inside the prison building, but to maybe put it uh, outside to the wall or like to make these connections visible. So, so I, I'm, I really have um, a lot of empathy, but also a lot of, um, I think that everything is in the room and there are very good ideas already on the table. Yeah.